order. Thanks, Secretary. Please call the roll. Western Commissioner Jose Blue. Present. Eastern Commissioner Bradley Jackson. With great enthusiasm, I'm present. Presiding Commissioner Lynn Moore. With great present. enthusiasm. Present. All right. Well, uh, we had a great meeting this morning. I appreciate all the ones that was here this morning. So we have um, no items to be removed from the consent agenda. We need to approve the consent agenda. Today's agenda, we approved a set of minutes for April 11th this <coughs> morning. We have no financials. We're going to keep in order the first item of business will be resource management. Uh, Director Weisenhahn, uh, campus updates, very important. Uh, we also have highway administrator beetles. Uh, we're talking about the Garrison Special Road District funding discussion. Uh, next, uh, Ms. Beatles will do uh, a discussion on road sales tax discussion and then uh, we've just got uh, communications commission. I think I've got one thing. We'll see what, who else has anything. And so I would um, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as stated. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 It passes. All right. Thank you very much. So. Uh, Mr. Todd, I appreciate you, and first of all, thank you for coming over here today. Uh, we won't do this every time like this, sure. but uh, I think this is really important. We've got a lot of really important people here who want to know uh, some updates, and, and so we'll let you have the floor. Okay. Well, um, I guess I, I've kind of summarized the timeline uh, moving forward uh, for you gentlemen. Um, as of last week, we can say that the water and sewer line insulation is essentially complete. Uh, the pipes are all buried. Uh, there is a, a waiting period before the final testing can be done. Um, but uh, we've moved past that now. Um, tomorrow, uh, we will have the uh, bidding documents uh, and the bid published uh, for the next step, which is the roadway and grading improvements for the whole site. Um, that is, uh, when we get that going, you'll really see that site uh, transform quite a bit. Uh, enclosed in your packet of information there, you should have a, a map that I put together that it tries to express the areas of cut versus the areas of fill uh, so you can kind of see what's going to happen. You dirt get cut away from some large areas and then move to others to create <coughs> some of the pads on the uh, commercial lots that we have out for sale. Uh, also uh, of note is that the real estate listings, they went live uh, on the 11th for the five commercial out lots. Um, I, I've given you a copy of the flyer that uh, our agent, uh, Brett Heinz with Murney, uh, has put together and also an example of the listing that's online um, on the MLS. They did a really good job putting these pictures together um, and everything. I, personally, I, I'm real pleased with what they've done so far. I'd be more pleased if they sell something. Um, let's see. So the uh, site grading bid, that publication will go out for three weeks um, and then we'll move to uh, opening of those bids and have them reviewed. That will take place on the 8th. Um, as part of our contract with Great River Engineering on this project, they'll be handling that uh, bid opening and uh, putting a bid tab together on that. Uh, then we would look forward to, on the 16th of May, hopefully the County Commission awarding that grading bid. And in that uh, part, we'll, you know, of course, do the dirt moving, but also uh, completing the stormwater management aspect, creating the detention basins, um, surfacing the road, um, and installing storm sewer and so forth. Um, so <coughs> as I mentioned, it, it's going to be a lot of change taking place then. Um, the goal would be, hopefully, for that grading work to begin on June 1st. Uh, we're hoping that we can get the uh, contractor to uh, really focus on the area that we plan to build county structures on first and try to get uh, that area kind of prepped up uh, to help make the bidding process for the construction projects uh, happen sooner. It's 
you know, if they, were, if they were to go out there right now and bid a project, they're looking at land where it's not really going to be elevated to and so forth. Uh, but if we can get that uh, shaped up a little closer, it puts us in a position to do that. Uh, basically, the, uh, the design plans are essentially completed for those buildings. Um, ideally, uh, we would put that out for bid uh, July 3rd. And, uh, of course, that would uh, need to be out there for uh, at least three weeks. And then we would have some time to review the various bids. And if the county commission could award those projects on about August 1st, it would be fantastic. Uh, and if all goes well, we'd be looking at breaking ground uh, early September. You never know what's going to happen. Except that there will probably be delays at some point, somehow. But we'll try to overcome those and move forward. Um, right now, they are finishing up uh, the abutments for the two pedestrian bridges that will be uh, along the, uh, the public trail. Uh, I went out there today. They've got some initial concrete work forward. Um, they'll finish forming those up uh, hopefully later this week. And maybe by next week, they'll get those bridges set. Richard's excited. He can uh, put some more gravel down in the right place. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll get to work on a little bit of that trail. Um, we are kind of waiting on the detention basins to be completed before we can really set that down uh, more permanently. Uh, I know that last week there was discussion about storage. Uh, and something you may not have known is that the maintenance building that that is planned to be built uh, contains 740 square feet of conditioned space um, that specifically was intended for, um, I know, the, the clerk's office and the assessor's office. Uh, and that, you know, is equivalent to about six 10 by 12 storage units. If you do the math, I know that, um, you know, we're talking in terms of the size of storage units you might need for temporarily storing things. Um, that building also has about another 1,500 square feet of general storage um, <coughs> that you may have to uh, argue with um, our maintenance director about whether or not to store things there. But I will stay out of that. Um, as far as the new operations building goes, um, just some facts on that. It's about 18,000 square feet total um, with about 4,600 square feet dedicated to the on-site clinic. Uh, the public meeting space in that building would be, be about double of the current space that we utilize. Um, the staff that will be located there would be the HR department, purchasing, IT, uh, building inspections, planning, and the highway department. Then the other building is the recycle center, and that's going to be a fully enclosed operation with the drive-through uh, where materials would be dropped off. And that structure also would include a shipping and receiving dock uh, with the intention of servicing the entire campus uh, for things that may be coming in or leaving. Um, I do have plans of pretty much everything rolled up here if anybody wants to have a look at them. Uh, also over at our building, you know, this stuff is always available have questions feel free to call uh, or come by anytime uh, I've actually got a scale styrofoam model put together that may or may not be wonderful but it does give a visual idea of what we're looking at but it was too big to carry over here so if there's any questions I can answer okay so Todd uh, I think that we do have some questions, and I think people out there have questions, so sure. we we'll just take our time one, one at a time just so I raise our hand. But I want to get started. So, so <clears throat> I, I see the timeline, and I've got Miss Amy, our auditor, here. So, what because of our ARPA money, the money that we have set aside, uh, what, what's our timeline restrictions on when we have to break ground, when we have to have contracts? Kind of like what we had to do for the green bridge, our bridges. I would like to have all contracts in place 
by the beginning of the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, beginning. Okay. Because if we contract a lot of things in the last week of the year, it's really going to look fishy. Right. So, so beginning of the fourth quarter, do you see a, an issue with that? I think that's doable. That, okay. That, based on my timeline, that gives us a month to be wrong. I think we can get there. We just need to be aggressive in uh, uh, moving forward, getting the building plans all uh, approved uh, and happy with those so that we can get it up to date. Now, do we have a lot of architectural and, and engineering things already set in motion, or we still got to get them to? Uh, it's pretty much all complete. It is complete. So pretty well complete. So, you know, and you've been doing a lot of this on your own. And, and the, the, I know the commission or any of us, we're, we, we, we're going to all work together as a team. We, we got to make sure we meet these deadlines. Right. We got to make sure that uh, we do what the auditor says that we, we've got to do. So whatever it takes, we, we've got to make sure we don't fail Absolutely. and get the, and the timelines done. Uh, so so just where, where I'll understand, but everybody else understands, because they've not been privy to some of these meetings, so, so number name the building that we're going to buildings that we're going to build first. Um, Resource management. Well, the, the right now the name is county operations. Building. County oper We're going to call it county operations. Unless you okay. come up with something better. I'm okay. Gonna, so, so what's that going to consist of? Uh, the on-site clinic, which the reason that that has a priority is we have an existing contract with this company already, and we're already way behind. Um, and that we have that. Um, How many square feet is that? That is uh, about 18,000 square feet in total. The uh, on-site clinic would be 4,640 square feet. Now will that have space to grow? Yes. It does. Uh, actually the whole building has some space to grow. There will be a few empty offices in there. And then uh, the other departments, as I mentioned, uh, human resources, purchasing, IT, building inspections, planning department, and highway department. And what's what's the first building that we're going to sell if, if, if when we start these things? I, I mean, uh, is it the resource management next to to? We need some? to uh, look at that, and also the. Recycling center. The land on the recycling yeah. center. Um, it's difficult to do that until we've got, you know, a rough estimate of when we can be out. Uh, the recycling center might be a little bit easier. <coughs> I believe the plan is to uh, bid the recycling center and maintenance building out together as one project, and the uh, the other building separately. And I, I believe those buildings actually will go up quite a bit quicker. So even if we were to start uh, the operations building first, the other two could easily be done probably sooner. And, and um, of course, obviously we're, we're going to sell those, and we're going to take that take that cash, that profit, and and pour into our campus. So what about the? Uh, somebody's already asked me about the uh, where a, where HR and IT is. And purchasing is today. So who gets that building? Are we gonna are we gonna give that to somebody else in the county, or or is that going to be a, a building we could sell to? I think that'll be up to, to you all. Um, I have no doubt that there's probably people already you know, thinking about it. But I I don't know whether you want to sell that or not. I think there's always a need, even if you little went back there or something. I, I'd even heard the sheriff's department was maybe interested in that building. Possibility. I mean, so don't necessarily want to sell any building that we can use, still use, the county can use. Well, um, you know, the county bought that um, and redid the whole thing. There's a pretty good investment there. So it's, it's a still, nice building. still a very nice, useful space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that clinic has enough space to, to, um, uh, Put a potential pharmacy in there, small dispensing area, uh, later on. That'll be there at the beginning. That, that'll 
Do what? That's part of the beginning. That's part of it. We'll plan. Because I really think that if you're gonna if you're gonna build a clinic, is the, the for the elected officials and its, and employees out there, uh, maybe we should just talk a little bit about why we want to do that clinic. A lot of people don't know and have questions, doubts about whether we really need that clinic. Uh, Ms. Amber, do you want to talk? Do you want to start out, or do you? Or I kind of want people to know a little bit more about the clinic. We we've made several presentations on it and had meetings on it where we we did a study, we brought in all of that information. Um, I don't have I don't have any of that prepared, but okay. the end result was it was they believed it would save us money on our insurance um, and be something that, that would help retain employees by giving them a place to go that would save cost. Also, it would be used for our worker comp claims and potentially would be able to do some of our therapy for them as well. Yeah, the, the nice and thing. Want to test it. Uh, the nice thing about the clinic is obviously our health insurance premiums are one of the things that really takes a hit every year, and we still have a zero uh, expense for our employees, and we want to keep it that way. So we don't want to have to start charging employees uh, part of the uh, cost for the employee. Uh, at the same time, the short time I've been here, I, I've learned that, that a lot of employees. Uh, don't even have a family physician uh, and so we have a lot of uh, our insurance company will tell us that we have a lot of uh, expense on urgent care and ERs that a lot of groups don't normally have so that is an expense that really racks up our insurance premium um, if we can have a clinic that employees can utilize with a zero copay and we are close by and we have the hours that we can serve our employee base, then hopefully we can reduce urgent care and ER visits. We can get people to go more on wellness and things like that. And we can avoid some sicknesses and things like that. Um, then I think that we can reduce our insurance premiums or even have other possibilities of, of things down the road that we might be able to do for this county uh, that other large groups do sometimes when they self-insure. So, so uh, I think that's the whole purpose of this thing. But one thing I heard in the past, I just want people to know that, and it's a possibility, no, no decisions have been made, but once we could make sure that we take care of all employee needs. That's the first priority. That is the reason why we're doing it for employees. But if we if we had that done and we still had more time uh, for our health employees uh, that's going to run that clinic, uh, then we might be able to to call the city of Ozark, city of Nixa. We might be able to call Sparta, we might, uh, Clever. We might be able to call some other smaller municipalities and, and 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 try to help them with their insurance costs we would be charging a co copay not a copay for county employees but a copay for city employees but it might be let's we'll say half of what they have to pay at one of the hospitals again that would give us revenue coming in that would help uh, compensate and pay for our expenses for our county facility but at the same time that uh, might be some cash flow that might help so being in healthcare business my whole life I'm not opposed to the health care but, but we would have to make sure that <clears throat> if we don't get good utilization of our employees uh, you know it, it's not going to be what we want it to be or need it to be but I really believe that uh, with some education and communication with everybody we can make that work I think we can make that work. So I think that, and I know that when you get into, I don't want to do that to begin with, I don't think any of us said that, but I think a, a pharmacy is, a, a, a pharmaceuticals are extremely expensive for, for uh, our employees to buy. And, and so uh, good purchasing, especially on the generic side, will, will, would really save our, our employees some money every month. And um, so that's something that we can look at later later on. Um, these um, 
the, the recycling, I think, is going to be important because uh, it's not going to look like a recycling plant. Is there go everything's going to be self-contained? You're never. If you didn't have a sign outside that said recycling, you wouldn't even know what that building was, was would you? That's the goal. Yeah. So you know you have you have neighbors out there that came and didn't like the idea of a recycling place here uh, out there on our 40-acre campus. But I, I I'll tell you that from what I looked at uh, and and how you have it situated. I don't and, and over at the at, over by the river we have old cars and we have a lot of stuff that's that's accumulated that we've allowed to accumulate. There'll be no old cars and and stuff being accumulated outside, right? I sure hope not. No, I I think the commission is going to make sure we, we we this is going to be a beautiful campus, uh, uh, basically almost a one-stop shop. Uh, when it gets done, it'll take several years to get this done. But 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 you can't have all this other stuff that junks it up. Uh, this will be a first class place, and we can, we can't have that. So we'll have to work with the sheriff and other people. You can't take old cars to die and stay there forever. That, that won't that won't work on this new campus. So yeah. actually, Richard, the the maintenance building, call it Richard's building. Um, on the back side of it, there's uh, a covered area where we'll be able to store the, the various trailers that's under the department. Well, and, and, and the things that we fashion. are using all the time, we need to store them, but we want to make sure that, that it's not obtrusive to peop neighbors that have owned land out there for a long time across the back that, that, uh, that, that they're going to start being offended. Because that's what we hear in plain zoning all the time, is those people get upset when they see something out their back door. Uh, so, so that's that. Uh, one of the questions that was a good question today. I think I think Sandy asked that question. Um, I hadn't thought about it, but I, I know we're sh sure going to be doing this surely. Uh, and one of the, one of the great things I think about having these new buildings, won't each of these departments, as we go from one to one to one to build these things, won't they have their own uh, employees' personal bathrooms? We're not going to have a bathroom that we're not going to have a bathroom that employees are going to share with with, with all the citizens, are we? Um, there is a well. There are, there's actually a bathroom on either side of the uh, building that you no know, would not generally be accessible to the public. Here, right? well, I, I, I <coughs> yeah, I, I, you know, this is a 103 or 104 year old building. And that's the way it is. We didn't have bathrooms in each department. But I think for lots of reasons, I, I, I think if there's any way possible as we're thinking up how to build this building, uh, I think every elected official's office should have their own bathroom. And obviously, the ones that only have one or two employees <coughs> may be a little different. They may not be as big a bathroom or anything like that. But I, I, uh, I'm just speaking now. I don't think sometimes our our bathrooms are as clean as they need to be, and we're using them too. So, so, so county employees are using them, and the public is using them. And I don't know how often they get cleaned, but I sometimes see things that uh, that I, if we're going to start new, we need to have the the best for our employees. So. <coughs> So th think about our bathroom situation. And when we talked about storage, I'm glad you're thinking about extra storage because we'll never have enough storage or enough parking. Those are the two things that uh, that always seems to run out. Uh, Do it my house. So, so um, <coughs> are any of those buildings where they could actually go up on the second floor if they need to and save a little space, uh, a little cost? And, to build if we ever had to build up. These have not been designed in that way. Uh, not been designed that way. Because we will run out of ground space too. Yeah. Someday. Okay, what kind of questions? Uh, commissioners, do you, uh, you got kind uh, questions? <coughs> well, I mean, I guess there's a few things that, uh, as always through this process, and, and some of this was established well before I got here. Um, I, I still have concern about lot five and six being sold. Um, and and 
who knows how quickly they could be sold, whether or not they will be sold, because there's a lot of available land that's been for sale for quite some time. I, I worry about the case that we might be hemming ourselves into a, a, an area that we might regret one day not having more space available to grow as we are and have been in the top five fastest growing counties for 30 years now. Um, I don't know that that's going to change. I think people are still going to continue to move here, which demand uh, for services will continue, which means space would be a premium for us. So I still worry about that. When it comes to the clinic, um, that's already uh, set in motion, and, and I've expressed my uh, concerns with that. Only having you know 200 employees, there's organizations like the school districts that have more that haven't pursued this, but it's already in motion. So. Um, we'll, we'll navigate through that and, and see where we're at. I guess one of my concerns is when it comes to space and starting to move employees, you, you, you designated that you know the county operations building would house HR, um, but the majority of all the employees are, are here on, in the downtown area. Is it premature to start moving them out? I said that. That would be very hard for us to leave. Yeah, and I think IT all, as we, well. We really can't leave until more employees go. Yeah. Now, I mean, that, those are conversations we can have. Sure, because absolutely. With the clinic there, I think that we could um, potentially move Krista out there, who is a benefits person. Um, we could move purchasing out there. Um, cause most, but I would have a really hard time with me and the guys leaving. I think in, you know, information technology is one that every every day I see them in this building. So if they were having to drive back and forth, but we go to multiple every times, all the time. sure. I mean, like we are we are all we go around all the time. Absolutely, places. but you know, cutting down on that that time frame of driving back and forth, and and at some point in time, more and more people will be moving out there um, over the years. I guess one of my so the space is there for when that the space will be there and, and be prepared and ready and they could be moving out in stages as, as time allows. Um, so I think that's a good thing. We're preparing for the future. I just don't want to get in a rush and say, you know what, we need to move HR and purchasing and IT out uh, prematurely when they still are going to be spending the majority of their time down here. That building's all paid for, so. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and as far as putting it up for sale, this building down here, I think that would be premature. But I understand the recycling building and the planning and development building. Um, when it comes to storage, I guess is one of my primary concerns. Uh, as the last time we had this conversation, some of the elected officials had expressed that they had never been approached with regards to space needs analysis of, of what their true needs are going to be. So that we make sure that we accommodate their needs, and I think that's paramount that we we reach out to them if you haven't already to make sure that. You know, uh, the uh, the clerk has what she needs now and what she needs 20 years from now, and, and and has that space available. Even though she may not need it for 20 years, there, we're not going to have to reconstruct walls or move anything to accommodate those needs. So um, I want to make sure that we take care of all the elected officials' needs, so we're not scrambling two or three years from now trying to rearrange walls and construct new space or be completely boxed out of space. It's, it's just a big wide open space. Uh, Richard, do you, do you deal with? Well, I think in the story ends. Uh, initially, when we started this process, we didn't look at what we were already storing at what we call the COVID house and what we had at various buildings, including my own, and uh, see what space is needed and what we can accommodate within our budget. And we had X amount of dollars and that's as far as we could go. So our budget, I think, dictated a lot of how this was designed. Um, there is space in the, the, in the people at the lost are selling, there's space for more buildings to go up in that area. So we don't know what our needs are going to be 10 or 15 years from now. Sure. And that's why I believe Todd and, and Miranda had hope I'm not speaking in our term here, had designated some areas. Uh, I think there was a, where there is a, uh, a space for a large building that says Sheriff's Office near the plans, but it was just a place to put a building. So we had that future site set aside for whatever building may go there, whether it be the Sheriff's Office or another full building, or et cetera. So there is, there is plenty of room to move forward as money and time allows in, as far as what our needs are going to be in the future. Okay. So <clears throat> from a perspective of how we're funding this, what has always been said is that 
um, there's some ARPA money being utilized originally, but then we would be funding this project as we go by selling off lots to repay for different construction costs, selling off existing properties that we have. So give us a good rundown of, of where the funding's coming from originally to get everything started, how far that's going to go with the ARPA funds to the point where we need to sell off lots to pay for the rest of the expansion. I would be inclined to defer to our auditor for that. Um, it is an important thing that we are ready to, to move the existing properties we have and convert those to cash to pay for um, various steps of this project moving forward. Mm -hmm. but I don't write the checks. I'm just trying to make it work. Okay, but you've got the cost estimates of what you think is going to require to be able to pull off these buildings. We still don't have a, a real precise number on that okay. yet until we, you know, put it out to bid. So, Miss Dent, can you answer <coughs> what's available to get the ball rolling ARPA wise building? Are we completely dependent on We have on 1.2 million set okay. aside for the construction of the plan. Okay. And I'm not going to speak the hypothetical numbers. Sure, sure. But 1.2 1, 1 million is not going to cover the overall size of that building, even if we're building utilitarian and doing infill, there's a potential it's not going to cover that. Hey, Tom, is that an 18,000 square feet or is it 18,000 plus 4,600 on the clinic? Uh, it's a total of 18,000. 18, so with that remaining 13,400 square foot, is that for potentially going to be used for all the elected officials at one time or is that going to be another building added for the elected officials down the road? That would be a, a different building um, that will be essentially the centerpiece of the, of the campus um, that, that would take place at some point down the road. And what are the plans for funding that building? Uh, there are no plans on that. So we've, got a, so we've got a circuit right. court building to pay for storage. Sure. At which we're currently obligating a large amount of money for the next how many years? Circuit court? 16. 16 years. I have another Almost question on storage. storage. Did you say, I, and I couldn't hardly hear you, but was it 740 square foot of temp storage? Is that what you said? Of condition storage? Temp. So, I mean, are we got any long term permanent storage that we're going to need? Because, I mean, we need permanent storage. So, temperature no, control. That would, that would temperature control. control. Temperature control. Temperature control. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Climate control. Okay. Right. Is that storage secure? There is a there's a uh, garage door on, on each storage, two storage areas. One's larger, one's smaller. There's a, a door that can be a walk-in door that can be locked, and then of course you can access the garage door from the inside for opening and shutting. I'd have to go back and look at the plans again as far as the larger space. Um, as that would be, let's say just for an example, we give that you you needed that for your whole apartment, and that was decided at some point, then you would have the keys to it and then there would need to be a backup key in a lockbox probably at the commission office or somewhere else. Well, how far would that storage space be from the clerk's office? Because trying to get equipment back and forth. Well, it's no different than driving to the ranch right now. We're right. already storing space. You're, right. you're eventually 50 yards from where you're at. But we want everything to be in one spot so we don't have to go different spaces. So I don't know if there was any storage in the clerk's office, the plans in the clerk's office for future. There are no plans. There's, there's, no, there's no, no plans. Over. There's no clerk's office over there. That's a separate building. In a way, not that they had plans for everything. Hasn't even been designed. Okay. It hasn't no. been. Okay. But the storage so. building, the storage space you're talking about is climate control. And the question that I would have, because I have, I'm running storage climate control. How secure is that? Because where I have it now, you have to go inside a build, have to get inside the building to get even to the my my storage locker or where you want to call it or storage space before you can get to it. And so, how would that area compare to where I have it now? 
we're looking at a metal building essentially with concrete floor insulation and uh, a heating and air unit. Uh, it would be an outdoor exit. There's not going to be a security guard standing there. Uh, whatever camera system security puts in there at the time it's built um, and ties into this system, that would be an answer for them as far as that goes. The question for them. Um, we we don't have double door access. We're not set up like that. This was this is not set up for high security. So would you be suggesting that inside this basically wide open bay that every elected official may have a chain linked off section that would be lockable because you got election equipment being that stored here that needs to be something we had, and we could also put the key card accesses in there so you know exactly who's going in and what time um, if our security system is adapted to that new lot I, I suspect it will be then you've also got the cameras and you can time stamp and see who's going in and out of there yeah. but once you put the key card to access it you know which employee is going in and out of there at what time sure sure and you but, can limit that to which employees you want. But that having it something along those lines where, you know, if it was chain linked off sections and, and that way your your climate control is over one big space versus having separate rooms right. and there's with walls and you can have separate rooms with walls, eight foot walls. The ceiling's going to be higher than that. Uh, and still have a central unit okay. for what we're using, uh, without a ceiling on top of those, so that would give you some added security, but it wouldn't be a hundred percent secure. Uh, if you wanted to take the chain link to the all the way to the ceiling and tie in, that would be an option, but it's also going to be quite a bit more expense. Sure. It's see also if it's something that, that you need security to that level, it probably shouldn't be there. I agree. Yeah, because what I'm saying, what I'm hearing from Paula and Ted or a guy in a pickup truck and a cutting torch, and they still all I have stuff. A, I have a suggestion for that if you want to hear it. We have the future development area in the circuit court building on the bottom floor. It is high security. Um, it's where we have our juvenile offices. We have our uh, where we bring <coughs> prisoners in and out. The mule, old mule's office is right there. It's a wide open space that could easily be adapted for a high security area for reinforcement and <coughs> documents for not a lot of cost. Um, it would literally be three walls. So if you have documents or something that's important, that would be my suggestion to move forward for that high security requirement. Mr. Wiesahan? Yes. Uh, <coughs> this is just curiosity because I drive by it every day. I think that I had had the anticipation that by the end of March, uh, the big dirt piles, the rock, the other stuff would be gone and that they were supposed to be finished. Um, and you, you, you talked about the fact that it's got to be tested, I understand that, but it's still, to the, to the untrained eye, it does not look finished uh, by quite a little bit there. Would you address that? Well, there are some portions of where you might see a manhole cover sticking up out of the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually the dirt is going to level up with that. Gotcha. Um, there are some other areas uh, where, for instance, there's a fire hydrant that seems to be sunk way down in the ground. Well, that's going to be trimmed away on the side. Mm -hmm. So there's there's quite a bit that's going to happen there. Um, they're probably not going to make those giant dirt piles go away because we're about to have an entire site grading pro project where there's really heavy equipment that'll come in and just make short work of that real quick. I guess what I'm really asking, did the contractors perform as we expected? Yes, I believe they did. Okay. Um, and another thing, they uncovered some pretty big boulders. Mm -hmm. And what we've asked them to do is, is leave those set aside because we really feel like we can take advantage of those and use them for some landscaping things. Sure. That okay, that's all I want to Thank you, Todd. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, my, another question, then we'll get Danny. Another question is, though, I'm kind of worried about the money. So how much money <coughs> approximately have we spent so far? Uh, have we started paying our the people that are doing all this so far, getting the water lines, mm -hmm. the sewer lines, getting all the grading? What, what have we spent so far? I don't have those numbers in front of me. Um, Just approximately. Uh, the contract for the 
So water in Cerro is 1.3. I think we had estimated 1.7. Um, and then for the, uh, I believe the architects are 90 percent paid. Yeah. I would think. Yeah, they've been continually <coughs> sending in their uh, payroll. But see, I guess my point is, I'm a little bit now I'm beginning to worry because we got 1.2 million, and that's all I've heard that we got, and we're depending on selling lots or buildings to help pay as we go, and and we may already have more spent than what we have. The 1.2 is set aside specifically for the building, separate from the water and sewer. Oh, that's yeah. we we still have some money set aside for water and. There are three separate projects going out there. Okay. Yeah. The 1.2 is specifically in the design for anything we're not cut into that. Okay, we're still okay then. Yes, I think we've probably spent about 1.4 on the what's yeah, been done with the sewer lines and that kind of stuff. I think it was in, the first check was almost a million dollars that we wrote to that guy. And then we've written another one. <coughs> I, think. I don't think the first one could have been a million. Well, it was 900 and some that odd thousand the dollars. The second one. Uh -huh. I think the first one, we, we paid him for buying some material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, whatever the one second one was about a million dollars yeah. that we gave him. And he came he's, and he got he's the He's up to testing, so I would say he's pretty much done. Like, and they bill on a continuous cycle. Um, so I would say he's pretty close to whatever the total, he's built pretty close to whatever the total amount is. I would, but I would think that if we can get m more hard costs of what this building, this first building is going to cost, the sooner the better, yep. because I think our comfort level is not going to be very good <coughs> if we're, we got these three different funds, but I mean, it, it's go, it goes fast, and, and so we want to know what. So, what would happen if we don't sell any of those five lots? Well, I, I can tell you that when we when this thing was laid out and planned, uh -huh. the plan uh, was that we if we are if we are unable to sell properties or lots, either one of those, in timely fashion, it just simply it either slows down or stops the process until we can. Okay. Uh, there was never any intention of. of of uh, building something because oh we know we're going to sell such and such uh, that that's that's too. I don't too think we'd be allowed to award the contract without the funding in place. Uh, the, so, so we 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 will. It'll just if that happens, then we we have to redo the plans or we have to wait until a property sells uh, on that. So I know that's the intention. We will never intend intend and probably legally can't uh, spend money we don't have. Right, but what about the uh, agreement that we have with the company that's going to run the clinic? Is there a time limit for us to get a building? If there was, we passed it. They they call um, about every couple of months and ask where we're at, and they've offered to bring out a mobile unit. That was going to be at more cost, so I said no. Um, they're being very patient right now. So they, so so far they've been patient with us, but if if we don't get it built in the next 12, 15 months. I don't know. We have an agreement for them to run that clinic. I mean, I guess we could find somebody else if it if they drop us. Is there any penalty if we if we don't I get probably look at that. Yeah. I, I would think that Austin probably needs to, to look and see what kind of liability we have because we did sign a, a agreement for them to run it and then they were... We did. It was building pending and Housley did that with me at the time. Um, so, but we we told them that it would be operating this year. I mean, they were under the impression that they would be here this year. Yeah. So, I mean, we were supposed to open. They were under the impression that we would be open January of this year. Hmm. Okay. So that's something we need to look at, Danny. Yeah, well, I just had a question on the building again. Uh, I know if you're figuring 1.2 million for this building, so 66 dollars a foot. I don't think you can build a metal building for $66 a foot. But, so I guess my point is, if you can't, so what, what are we going to do for overages on that? Because I mean, most likely it's, it's going to It's 1.2 million for the clinic. Just the clinic. So 1.2 million for 4,000 square feet. Not for the 18,000. No, that has to be funded separately. separately. 
that's not an eligible ARPA excuse. Yeah. So the one point two is just for the planning, which is four thousand and change. Okay, so let me back up just a minute. Let me understand. So four thousand square feet, you're gonna build that building first. You're just gonna build four thousand square feet. Or are you gonna build eighteen thousand? It's part of the eighteen thousand. They're connected. So we have to have additional money to fund the rest of the eighteen thousand square the what uh, fourteen thousand square feet or thirteen five? Where's that money coming from? The sale of properties. I'm, I'm just confused. <laughs> I, I, and here's the point: I understand the one point two, but if we don't sell the properties, you can't. You can't not build the building when you get started. So I guess are we borrowing the money to build the eighteen thousand square feet, then to pay that back with the no. sale of the land, or are we going to wait we're until not, we have the sale? We're waiting of the land until we have the money. So we're not going to start this project until we sell some land. Most likely. That, that was my point. <coughs> I just want to understand. I didn't understand how that's planned. But then we run into issues. <coughs> Potentially, there's there's certain pieces of land we can't sell till we have a place to move into. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you can't sell the recycling center if you don't have a building to move into. You can't sell the planning and development building. The vacant land that's out there around the campus is for sale, but yet there's tons of vacant land in the same area that's for sale. So I'm really kind of concerned about how we're going to be able to do any of this. Um, if the 18,000 square foot is the overall footprint and 4,000 square foot's inside of it. If they were two separate buildings, I think you could build the clinic separate from everything else, but then your construction costs overall are going to be higher. And we're in a kind of a conundrum here. Um, the very concerns that we've been dealing with for the last two or three years. I'm sorry. So, it's, so it's, it's not new. This, these are the concerns that, that we've been worrying about for the last couple of years as well. So yeah. It's not a surprise. Is there any, been any thought on spending that one two point two million dollars of our funds on something else that can be beneficial to the taxpayers and the county now? I mean, I mean, is it too late to change course? Because this almost seems like I don't know. I don't think it's ever too late to change course. It's just a decision that has to be made. Um, weighing the options of how much we put into it versus what the commission would like to do. Sure. Um, but there's a not an order that the commission assigns. Back when we were proposing uses for the ARPA, there was uh, not a funding request, but something that an allocation. allocation. Right. Allocation so they would order. just have to reverse that, assign it to something new, um, and then make that decision. But you can. You can almost stop anything if you wanted to. With all the land that, or the land that's there, the amount that's being sold off, will that still allow for everything to be moved out there? That I don't know what all you're all looking at moving out there. Would will there be enough space to move all the offices that I don't know how many offices you're talking about moving out there? In the long run, or yes, it, yes, way more than enough, except for the sheriff's office and the jail. But she didn't want to be out there. Yeah, want to be out there, and I don't think the neighbors want to. So I, I guess yeah. long term, I'm just asking, but judicial, we didn't move also. It would probably be a very long time since we just built the new building. That's because yeah. 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 we got Then we got 16 years before we get it paid off. 16 years. That's what the auditors say. <coughs> <coughs> so, we, we've got some issues here that we need to... What, is, what are the dates on the order of funds that have to be allocated and then spent? What kind it's got to be under contract by the... End of this year. End of this year, but you need to have the contracts by the... No, it's got to be beginning. contracted. It's got to be out the door by the end of this year. Contracted by the end of built and spent by the end of 26. It's preferably under contract by the first October. Last yeah. check cashed by the end of terms. How big are the lots that you're talking about selling, or the acreage, or whatever? So there's 40 acres out there. The, the, the couple that I'm concerned about, which are compact and contiguous to the new Christian County campus, are 3.44 and 3.28. 
inside. Seven acres. The other three are on 25th across from Big Whiskey's and 1.45, 1.95, and 3.24. Those have the walking trail woods in between where the new campus is set in the corner. So, so you're talking approximately 13, 12, 13 acres all together with those lots? You've got about seven on the two that you were talking about, one point something, one point something, two point something, or whatever. 12 so 13, 14 acres. acres, 13 and a half to 14 acres, roughly. Reggie said lots five and six are the two you're concerned about. Five and six are the ones that concern me because they're compact and contiguous mm -hmm. to the rest of the development. If you needed to expand, you, you have a seamless flow of property there. Uh, you know, if you, if you looked at two, three, and four, um, you, you've got separation of services, you've got dysfunction in, in uh, uh, if, if we needed to use those later for other little pieces, the, the campus doesn't flow as much. One of the things that I would just say, uh, I would, as always, we will have to deal with reality as it presents itself at the time. Building costs may go up too quickly. We can't do such and such and so on. But I feel like there's a little bit of a sense that we are already prejudging the fact that <coughs> properties won't sell and so forth. Maybe they don't. But we had them appraised. If we, we didn't pull numbers out of the out of the air. And so I would. My own feeling is I'm not stressed by it because I think that the I, I think that the property where uh, the recycling is will sell. Uh, sure. I just don't really doubt that. I, 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 I'm not a, an agent, but I really believe where the resource management building is now is going. You know, you can sell that property, Guaranteed. and we had them appraised. So we're 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 not. So I'm just saying that as these things begin to happen, uh, there may come a point that you said, well, we didn't do all that we hoped that we would do, but we did enough to do this part of the project, and then we have to wait on the rest. But but I certainly would not, and I would not be comfortable kind of pulling the rug out from under this because, well, we don't know if these properties will sell. We just, we, from the beginning, the design was to do this with money by, that we would make by selling uh, properties uh, that, that we, are, we already own. And so I think that, I think it's still a good plan. Well, I, and, I, and I'm not concerned about recycling that property selling. I believe that that would be sold very quickly to an investor to build townhomes to continue that flow down right. through there. Right. Uh, the problem is, is we've got to build a building for recycling to go somewhere before we can sell the property, which well, we don't have. Well, you, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can sell the property with the understanding that they don't take uh, possession of it for six months or three months or something. You know, I'm assuming that... If you find the right buyer, yes, that's yeah, it. That they want it. the property and they know it, they can sign on it, but we can still sell it. I, I think I think that anything's possible. Resource, anything's possible. Resource management building, I guarantee you that thing would sell within six months of, of hitting the market, um, because because it's on the main main street. The other properties out at the campus are the ones that concern me the most, and that's where we're we're kind of banking on our, our funds. Lot two at seven twenty seven, lot three at four ninety one, lot four at three sixty seven. Five is six thirty, and lot six is seven forty six. There's an ample amount of revenue there to offset construction costs. Right. I'm just not convinced that they're going to sell. And on the flip side of that, I'm afraid of selling land that we're going to need one of these days for expansion because, you know, in in 1917 when they started thinking about building this building, everything fit fine. You know, and then it didn't, and we built a building next door, and then it didn't, and we built another building next door, and it didn't, and we acquired a piece of property next door, and it didn't, and we acquired another piece of property over here. We're going to continue to grow, and if we box ourselves in, it really makes me nervous, and, and, and I may be dead and gone, but the next generation is going to be saying, why didn't the commissioners ensure we had enough space when they had the chance? And that's kind of where I fall on the planning process. I guess I could just say well, that's say their problem. I presented the facts, the numbers, sure. the actual numbers. And, and I'm not trying to beat you up on this. I really am not. Everything we have right now would fit on a postage stamp on this property. And you know, we have complete control and discretion over how we want to do it. We don't have to deal with the city of Ozark as far as meeting parking requirements or anything like that. We can go up to the sky if we want. 
Um, so there is enough room here. But, you know, unless there's some unforeseen service that a county government is going to provide in the next century, I, I mean, I can't imagine this possibly. Not I, 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 and I, I, I agree with uh, Mr. Walker, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bradley, that we ought to be thinking about those generations ahead. Absolutely. And I and I hope that we're doing that. Uh, I, I kind of compare it to the people that were pressing hard a bunch of years ago to buy the FASCO building instead of building the circuit court building. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. It's going to, uh, we did it, <laughs> you know, and as we see what this, the school system's done there, I'm proud of them on that. But uh, you just cannot, uh, you really cannot predict tomorrow, much less 40 years from tomorrow sure. uh, at, at that point. But I think we need to do our best on that. On that. Mr. Morris, I'm going to mention to you now because mm -hmm. uh, I had no idea that a, that a uh, campus update would take up this much time. I'm going to have to leave by about five after uh, okay. about five after two because I've got a 2:30 appointment in this afternoon meeting uh, at, was scheduled a couple weeks ago, but it's, I need to be somewhere at 2:30. So I just want you to know that. Okay. Uh, I don't know that we're going to come to a. Uh, a consensus or an agreement or a solution today. I think that it's very important that we have the, our fellow elected officials have input into their stored Absolutely. needs and, and <coughs> what their concerns are. And, and I think we need to revisit this with, you know, some plans of action. I know that the auditor, I'm, I'm glad I don't sit in her chair because she's thinking, okay, we've got to get all these pieces of the puzzle in place so that she can get all the necessary paperwork with the federal government taken care of, the money's allocated, the money's spent, and she, she's looking to us to, to, to make these decisions, but I want to make sure that we make these decisions together. Obviously, the, the decision on, on certain things fall with the three of us, but sure. uh, for us to make wise decisions, I think we definitely need to be listening to everyone that's sitting out here in the audience with us today. How, about, how about this? Um, I think time is is very important. is is a very important thing, and uh, I, I believe. And Todd, I appreciate everything you've done. So this is not not negative at all. But I believe we may need a, a committee, a committed group of, of elected officials. I'm okay with with county employees, top county employees. I, I, I think we need to. I think we need to constantly work on this thing. Maybe a meeting every week or every other week or. We, we need to move. We, 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 we need to push now because when I add up the amount of money that, that if we sold the five lots, we, we'd have about 2.9 if we sold it for exactly what, what we've got them listed for. The two lots that you're thinking that we might need later on is a 1.4 million total. So you take that 1.4 out if you decide you want to save it and you got 1.5 of the other three. Is that enough to go to to keep this thing pushing until we get a lot sold or two? I think we need to. We're not going to figure this out in in one meeting. I think it's going to take several communication meetings where we work together. And I would, if if you all want to, and we can vote on this if if you want to do this. I, I would think that any, the people that are here today, and maybe some that weren't able to come today, I don't know who they are, but but my want to serve on a committee if you think it's worthwhile to have a, a small group of people, five to seven people that would work together on, on making this thing a reality if that's what we wanted to do, to uh, send your name to Kayla, let's see if we can put, get together a group, and then I think we're going to have to work on this. I don't think that, that we can have one person do it. It's too much. This is too big. A, a, and it's uh, too important, uh, and we have this time element that we we have to meet. Uh, do you all think that we could have a committee with the, the I think the quickest way to miss deadlines is to have another committee. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my own opinion. Well, we haven't we had, had a committee. We've had all those. I well, think I think a lot of not the, my, not I think my. a lot of the things have been already touched upon today. But as we begin to actually focus in on the building itself, and here's what we're doing, that's a great time for anybody that's going to be involved in that to say, hey, can we put more storage space here, do that, the other. There's a lot of input that can go there. But if we're not careful, we're, we'll, we'll move this whole thing back three years, and now we're back and looking at the whole philosophy and the whole plan. And I, I, like I say, I think 
I think that uh, going back to a committee and then I think that's going to take uh, that's going to take more time. Um, I think we're having good good input here, but I, I would be very hesitant to go back to uh, let's do seven more study sessions and another committee. Uh, it's just uh, to me that's not the way to to move something forward. That's we we can change anything we need to change, but we need to be careful about just going back and saying, well, let's just redo the whole thing, and we don't sell the lots, and we don't do this, and we don't do that. In fact, we just don't do the project. Let's see if we can sell the whole thing. You know, at that point. Well, uh, that's fine. So so. But uh, that's just one yeah. answer. No, no. Well, sure, and I I understand that. I respect that position. I mean, <clears throat> and I don't want this comment to sound bad, but I've inherited a project. Sure that I wasn't involved in in the conception of the project and I have concerns over some of the ideas that I'm trying to navigate through. Sure. Had I been sitting in this chair when this whole thing started, I would have been pushing maybe a little bit different of a direction, but that's not the case. The case is, is we're already moving forward with some of these pieces in place and we just have to navigate through them. I don't even know what a, uh, I know we have 1.2 million set aside, but I don't even know what the cost estimate is and, and I need to know what a cost estimate is before I can ever put something out the bid because I don't know if I can pay for it without having some form of a cost estimate and I know those fluctuate but I need to know that I can pay for something before I go to the point of putting it out for bid because that cost that, that bid may come back at 1.4 well, I don't have 1.4 I only have 1.2 and you, you have to shift and move it with inside that but I think definitely this is a paramount thing I think we should probably be touching on it weekly um, so that we, we don't run ourselves into a position where the auditor is, is you know yelling at us saying hey you know these deadlines they've been here all this time and we're about to miss them. I think uh, I think that we if she can if she's willing to do so we can ask her between her and Todd and then and Miranda or anyone else that's already worked a lot on this uh, to put together a summary sheet of where we are. This is how much money we have. This is this is designated for these things. Give us something there to look at, so we at least get that picture of current reality, <coughs> because that's uh, that's part of good leadership. So yeah. I think that would be certainly be appropriate. Well, one thing we can do with, uh, for all the elected officials here and the ones that aren't here, uh, obviously you heard what we heard today. Uh, uh, Todd is our point person. Uh, you can send any question, any comment to Todd. When you send it to Todd, our point person, you're also going to send it to the commissioners. All three of us need, to, I want all three commissioners to know the same thing, hear the same thing, see the same thing. So, so uh, uh, I, I, if you send something to Todd, send it to us too. And I do agree, maybe maybe this is overkill, maybe it's too much, but almost an up, a short update every week. Uh, uh, just to add a commission meeting to know where it may just take five minutes, ten minutes, whatever, but just to know that we're on point, that we're still moving, we're still looking, we're moving, we're, uh, we're trying to do something, I think wouldn't be a waste of time. I don't know if that's too time consuming, Todd, but, but honestly, I, 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 I feel a sense of urgency, but uh, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. I was pretty much in the dark my two years as as Eastern Commissioner. Uh, he inherited the issue, but I'm, I'm not much smarter than he was because I wasn't told hardly anything my first two years, and, and, I, and so I'm, I'm new at this too. But I am concerned that the, where the money's coming from and how we're going to do things. And we've already started it. Sure, we can stop it, but I don't know if that's what we want to do. Uh, I, I think that the idea is a good idea. We just have to figure out how we can implement it. And, and I'm, I'm okay, Todd, if, if you think you could give us an update and, and we can work closely with our auditor and, and Miranda and, and, and all the elected officials and employees too. They can, they can work with the elected officials and send those comments and questions to you and then, and then you send them to us too. We need to know what you're sending, uh, Todd, where we all are on the same page because I don't think we're all on the same page right now. So, I mean, no negative for it. It's just that uh, I think now is the time to, to, to get it right and, and, and go with it if we're going to do it. Absolutely. And I'm glad we've done what we've done. I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, I just want to make sure we do it right. 
and, and I think everyone in this room wants to do it right. And just have to realize this is not a it's not going to be a short process. It's going to take several years if this campus materializes. It's going to take several years to really make it work. But I really do believe that at the end it could be really a, a good thing. So that's where I'm at. I don't think there's anything we need to vote on today. No, we'll okay. go. We'll, we'll go to the next topic. But, but uh, unless there's any any other any comments, other comments final elected. comments, questions. Jerry, did you have another question? I'll go. No, I mean I'm not against it. I'm just concerned. Uh, I mean, I just know from my job and aspect, we have one of the lowest tax sales tax levies and general revenue levies. And if we don't have enough money to fund a project and we get a project sitting over there that's unfunded and it's a black eye for the county, that can have a detrimental effect to, for generations, for years. Sure. So, I mean, this is an important decision to me. Well, and it should be to everybody and else, and I think it is. But that's just what I see. Yeah. I mean, before we jump feet first into this, I mean, if we don't have enough money to complete the project and it's sitting over there and it's a nice we're like the LCR A land here in Ozark, that's going to be years before we can move forward and maybe get a levy increase to function and provide the services that we got to provide for the taxpayers. Well, and you're most likely going to be an office holder too, and you're going to you're going to be in this situation. You know, sales tax is one of those issues that last year for the first time in eight or nine years or maybe even longer but what Miss Amy told me was that we you know we we always had sales tax going up and last year we we had a pretty bad year for sales tax probably six months up six months down and and where are we at so far this year Miss Amy? Flat? So less so than one percent increase. One percent increase. Less than. Oh, less than one percent increase. We want to round it up. It sounds better. <laughs> and, 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 and so here, it's here's not that side of the decimal. <laughs> <laughs> here's a problem. So so sales tax eighty percent of our budget, and, and and thank goodness we just got another nine thousand dollar grant. That may not be a great big grant, but all those grants add up to more thousands, and and so we appreciate that. Uh, the sales tax is an issue. This county's going to have to decide, this commission, and you all will help us, we're going to have to decide about a use tax, because uh, sales tax, because uh, the counties that, that have done it, when, we, uh, when both of us went to the district meeting yesterday, the counties that have it, they're doing much better than we are. And, and Nixa is doing much better than we are as a city compared to, you know, their one plus million that they're getting every year with, with that. We, we have probably got a, a serious consideration. It's going to be hard to pass it, but we've got to pass it. So when we do it, it's got to pass. And, uh, we're and that's just what I worry about because I yeah. want to make sure that yeah. this goes smooth. So there's there a lot of consideration. Sure. So the citizens know. Yeah. And, and it's only been, that vacant land over, over there has only been there 17 years. So it's... That's not what we need out there, for sure. I was that was a joke. It was only, it was only that. Never mind. It's a bad deal. I don't want to have another one of those. Yeah. All righty. Let's okay. talk Garrison Special Road. Okay. All right. We're done with that part of me. Thank you all for coming. Uh, the next two issues will be about roads and and things like that. If you're interested in roads, then then stay with us. Okay. Okay, Ms. Brandy, you are up on Garrison Metro Road District. This may be something that, that Austin can help us with, um, too. I Austin. I'm worried. I'm Just thank you for all the fun and excitement you've had today for the past hour, and now we're ready for you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, on to the, the next item. Um, it came to my attention that uh, the commission was contacted by the Garrison Special Road District recently um, about uh, being part of our sales tax distribution program again. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that um, before any decisions were made, um, specifically for you two folks that were not here when all that happened, um, that you were aware of what happened. Um, before making any decisions about how to move forward with Garrison Special. Um, so, uh, not sure how much you all know, but I'll do my best to start from what I know. 
Um, and I think the auditor can maybe fill in some blanks, but I don't know. Um, <coughs> we'll move forward. But, but essentially, um, um, in 2020, it was uh, discovered that Garrison had not been spending their sales tax distribution funds um, on the things that they said they were spending them on, but also not uh, not appropriately. So there were a lot of private driveways that were being paved, um, a lot of a lot of paving happening off any kind of right of way um, and on private property. Um, it also appeared that some of the checks that were being cut um, were paying the the board members um, kind of a wage. My understanding when uh, statutes say that you're not, um, there's no compensation for that position. Um, but when I found this out, turned everything over to the auditor, uh, contacted the sheriff, they pulled the uh, highway patrol into the investigation. Um, and, uh, you know, just to, just to kind of give an example, some of the invoices that we pulled. Um, you know, typically our invoices will say, um, you know, uh, chip and seal sandstone from this location to this location, or chip and seal shelvin rock. Um, these say Norm's Road, Kelly's Road, uh, Tim Steps Driveway, and then just George Jones, um, whatever that happens to be. I believe just there was blatantly Tim Jones Driveway. Yeah. Or um, a short driveway behind Nan and Pa's house. Oh, you stole my thunder. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. There was one that was like Nana and Papa's house. Um, there was one that specifically said, make sure you go up behind the barn and pave there. Um, so how long did that, we found that out in 20, but how long had that been going on? It's unknown. So um, what they would submit to the county every year for their, uh, essentially their sales tax proposal um, it said, you know, Garrison Special has 24 miles of road, which is actually correct. That's what they received CART funding for. Um, they would mention different roads within their district that they were going to take care of, like Garrison Ridge. Um, they talked about crack sealing and trimming trees, replacing culverts, etc. Um, but that's not actually what they ended up doing. So the records we pulled, I think, went back to 2017, maybe. Um, and the same issue forward, I don't know, um, you know, I don't know if the Highway Patrol asked for anything further back. I don't think the county got anything further back. Did the that. Attorney General act on this at all? Were they involved? Not that I'm aware not of. No, no, it's so not an Attorney General issue. It's not? Um, what happened, it was referred to the Christian County Prosecutor's Office and the reason it only went back three years is because that is the statute of limitations for felonies. And um, the prosecutor requested additional information, additional investigation from the Highway Patrol. The Highway Patrolman that was handling it unfortunately passed away in the middle of the investigation <coughs> and it just kind of died there. Nobody else picked it up and there hadn't been any follow-up. Did we ever come up with a total, grand total of what we think that they misappropriated? You know, I think um, for the three years that we had records of, we did, and I, I believe it was into the six figures. Um, not only not only our funds, but the funds that they receive, um, you know, for just being a special road district property tax, they receive um, a little bit of CART funding. Um, a lot of that basically went to um, places it shouldn't have. There was repetitive chip and seals of some of the commissioner's driveways. Um, you know, a chip and seal almost every year, every two years, and it was clear that it was just a single driveway to a house. So those three, those three road commissioners that were serving at that time, how long had they served before 2017? I don't know that answer. Um, but I do know that at least two of them are still commissioners. They yeah. are. See, I, I, you know, it's just from what I've heard today and what I've heard in, in the last two or three <coughs> weeks, I, 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 I can't trust those two people. I don't know who they are. But, I mean, how would I know that, I mean... The, the, the reasoning that was shared with me about why it happened was they didn't know which roads were theirs. Um, and it basically they just didn't know. 
yeah, but their driveways and all their personal stuff that that's not that's 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 not part of it. So I, I guess I got a couple of questions because I was approached by one of the commissioners that that you know was expressing <coughs> some concern. They don't they don't have enough revenues to be able to pull off the projects that they they feel that they need to mm -hmm. to do. They're wanting reinstatement of the county sales tax revenues. Um, I don't know if they have any employees inside the Garrison Special or if they subcontract all of their work out. And, and so here's one of the things that he, he sted, stated to me. Um, we're at the position where we may put this on the ballot to disband the road district. And you guys don't want that because then they'll become your roads. And, and I totally understand that concept. But I don't like being threatened either. Um, that, that usually doesn't sit very well with me to be threatened. They're, they're accurate. I mean, if, if they can't be able to do the projects that they need to do because their funding's not adequate, but they put themselves in the position that they lost a, a, a stream of the revenue because we're not going to participate in a fraud. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> my question, I guess, ultimately rolls around to if they disband, there's a lack of a revenue source to take care of 24 miles of road that would ultimately be dumped on us to take care of, and it would hamper my side of the county's budget with regards to what I can do with my existing. Can we enter into an agreement with them that they subcontract all of their work to Christian County Common One as an administrative body, they're still there, they're still collecting the revenue, but they subcontract all of their work to Common One for completion and then we would then we could allocate the sales tax revenue over to help take care of the existing legitimate roadways that are there you got my question I, yeah it gives me a little bit of heartburn because <laughs> because these smaller road districts in a lot of cases they subcontract out all the work because they don't yes. have the equipment they don't have the employees, yeah, so they're subcontracting somebody anyway. I'm fairly certain OSRD does that, don't they? OSRD has their own equipment. They have their own employees, yeah, but they employees. still subcontract a lot of their work out because it goes right. above and beyond their abilities to complete. So, so I don't want anything, even with more funding, I don't want anything more for C1 and C2. We're, we're struggling as it is. Now, now the auditor shared with me, and this was kind of the next subject I was going to talk about, but the auditor shared with me um, basically the revenues for each of these special road districts for fiscal year 23. Um, Garrison Special, uh, through their sources, had $63,432.82. Um, now, divided by how many miles they have, um, you have about $2,800 a mile. For C1, um, I have $3,800 a mile. Mm -hmm. um, places like Ozark Special have $12,000 per mile. Um, now, 63000 would likely be enough to play, pay for one employee with maybe benefits, um, but it's not going to buy us enough rock. It's not going to take care of any pieces of equipment. Um, I think we'd still be behind and we'd be we'd be inheriting roads that are literal cart paths down there because they haven't been taken care of. Sure. So we wouldn't, the money that we would have to turn around and invest in those roads to even bring them up to our common one standard uh, would take away from the folks that are already in common one waiting for their roads to be done. I, and I, know, and I, I absolutely agree. And I understand that sometimes these places are, they are going to disband, you know, there used to be a Nixa special, there used to be other special road districts. Um, these things are going to happen naturally. I certainly wouldn't want to essentially force it for such a low <coughs> amount of funding. I, I totally understand. So my, my point with with them subcontracting with us is only to uh, allow the funding mechanism that's currently in place to stay in place. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm fairly confident that if the commissioners say, you know what, we just can't do this anymore, and, and they get a petition together, and they put it on the ballot to disband, and you have the opportunity to go to the ballot box and, and check, yes, I want to pay less taxes, there's going to be a lot of people that will do that. 
not thinking about how, oh, well, the county would just take over your roadway. They would probably sell it as such based off the conversation I had with one of the commissioners. Yeah. But we weren't going to have the ability to continue to, to make it any more yeah. uh, or spend any more in that area to... Uh, I think I think their sta their roadway standards end up being even worse. But what if Garrison Special took care of the roads they were supposed to? I've got a what if, now. and we're on TV right now, and I can't say my what if. Um, yeah. you but know. I'm just saying, like, I, I think before again, before entertaining, essentially what you're what you're showing is. Mm -hmm. I think they need to show that even with the funds and on the correct roads, they still can't. With the funds that they have and not the correct roads, they can't do it. I, I'm not sure that's fair again to Common One to have to take that in. I, I, to I totally understand. Yeah. I just feel like we're we're in this position where <coughs> our citizens are going to lose. Yeah. No matter which way we go here, and I'm trying to find the the best option in which we lose the least. Yeah. Because um, it sounded to me. Uh, I'm just not interested in doing this job anymore. Yeah. We can just disband this organization. I got one less headache on my hands. That's that's what I heard from that, that commissioner. That's probably one of the commissioners who's doing illegal activities. And it's not fun. Be. It's not fun when you can't do your own driveway <laughs> every year. I well, I don't I know how anybody could do that anymore. Anyway. I think with $3,000 a mile and only 20, 23 point whatever miles it is, I think they could do a lot of good if they wanted to. Now, if they're just tired of doing the job, I think that's different. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, Karen. you know, like I said, going through these numbers, um, uh, without without our sales tax program, so without the possible $100,000 we give each of these special road districts a year, um, you know, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, counting us. So five of the six special road districts have more dollars per mile than we do. And so again, adding mileage, but with very little funding because Garrison doesn't have a lot of funding. Mm -hmm. And again, so five out of six have more money per mile than we do. Yeah. And I and I just to let you guys know, billings for billings um, for Ozark Special and for Selmore Special. Um, I did cut their numbers down by a certain percentage because I do know they have employees and uh, some overhead for the um, shops and some of the equipment that they had. So those were knocked down um, so those numbers could be more representative of, of yeah, Karen, what we have. Yeah, do you have a comment? Well, a couple. First off, they got their stuff in that position. Sure. If they would have taken that money and used it on their roads properly, their roads wouldn't be in the shape they are. My other question is, we have never done that with any road district, and I just don't think that's kosher to be doing that, mixing us going out and working for other people. Oh, so that's to get in the position. Okay, so I want you guys to take mine over and start doing mine. So are you going to, uh, we don't want to do this anymore. So can we make oh. a deal with Common One or Common Two? Can you guys come out and start doing work for us and we'll just pay you. So yeah. all you're doing is adding more employees, more equipment, and all that kind of stuff because the more you take on, the more you're going to have sure. to be responsible in, for. In the overall grand aspect of, of what I propose or what I'm saying here is <laughs> that uh, um, use Ozark Special Road District for example. They have four employees. Uh, if you took their 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 operation and you said okay city of ozark we're going to subcontract that to you common one we're going to subcontract that to you we would need four additional employees we, and we would need as much additional equipment and the overall to the taxpayer it would lower the burden on the taxpayer overall because you would have fewer people fewer pieces of equipment doing the same amount of work you're still, I'm still telling you, I, I you're opening it. up a can of worms. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Because you're going to have these other special road districts come back to you and say you're doing it for them. Are you going to do it for me? Sure. And I still say, if they're getting that money, you pick which projects are the most important. You get that project done. Next year, you have another project that you do. Yeah. That's what you do. And then you do your upkeep on what you have to do. But, you know, you got to set your priorities and figure out what what needs to be done first. What road do we need to take care of? And let's get that one done right. 
and then next year we're going to do this road and we're going to do it right. Oh, I don't know. I just I think you're opening up a big can of worms if you start doing that. Sure, and I don't even know that it would pass muster with regards to the law, you know, doing that. It, it's just trying to figure out a way in which where we can take care of all of our citizens the best that we possibly can and not open ourselves up to fraud, not lose, uh, you know, because the people in that area agreed to, a, at some point in time, agreed to a special road district and having that assessment on their property. They deserve to have their roads fixed one way or the other. The, the fraud that was perpetrated by a couple of the commissioners, they should have put some time in the, in the, in the jail cell for what they had done or be caused to reimburse the road district for the, the special benefit that they got. They violated their oath of the Constitution because they took a special gain for themselves. And, and I'm not prepared, I don't think I'm prepared, I'm pretty sure I'm not prepared to start divvying up more additional revenues to them when they haven't proved that they can, they, or they proved that they couldn't handle it because they were doing special interest projects. But at the same time, I don't want to harm my citizens on, on in, in the county by them driving on substandard roads because they're not getting what all the other, you know, all the other road districts are getting a piece of that sales tax revenue. Yeah. And if we go back to giving them, how can we trust them? Ha have they exhibited the ability to trust them over the past four years since they've been cut off? I mean, I think we'd have to request request their records again for the past yeah. to look at it, which I don't know if, I know they have to submit certain things to the auditor, I don't know if they have to submit, you know, their contractor receipts so or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing that the, if they it's were submitting paperwork that says, pave up behind Nana and Papa's barn. Well, that's the thing, so. The <laughs> so it's brazen. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. Didn't even try to hide it. No. You know, well, just and that was that was the thing. So, so one of their projects that they had applied for, I had driven down to Garrison, and while I was down there, I noticed a lot of freshly paved driveways. So, after meeting with the auditor, I actually emailed their secretary and asked for their records, and without issue, this was all sent. So, um, and that was twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah. So there was no no attempt to hide it, um, but yeah, we got we got a lot of interesting information at that point, and then went back down there to look at it and let law enforcement handle it from there and the prosecutor. And if I may yes, that comment, that the highway patrolman got from everyone in the area. Well, we've always done it. That's why I was asking a while ago, how long has those guys been in? Because I have a feeling it's, Apparently it's gone on before, before 2017. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well, I used to pay the majority of the road district's bills. And so we had a little bit better uh, idea of what was being done until they decided that I was commingling funds, which every treasurer in that whole state of Missouri just about did that and it had been done that way for all those years but when a certain commissioner was here they decided they didn't like me so they wanted to try to find something to cause me some problems. So all of that except for Billings and Ozark who had their own employees and I would just they would ask for X amount of dollars and then I would write them a check for that money. So when all of that was taken out of our auspice we lost control of a lot of what was going on and saw where the money was going and where it was being spent. Um, that we we kind of screwed ourselves on that deal. Yeah, I would agree. And it wasn't commingling of funds. It was not. But I was forced to do that even though I didn't think it was right. So kind of bit off our nose and fight ourselves on that deal just because of personality conflicts. What kind of money would it cost to do a, a, an audit on, say, uh, 22 and 20, year 22 and 23, uh, with Garris? I don't have the authority to do it. Right? Uh, That's not our responsibility. We, but, yeah. so, but we can't. But uh, this commission can't vote. Uh, well, I'd be a no vote. I can't give them any money unless I know what their performance is. I mean. You're saying they've got two or three thousand dollars a mile. Uh, 
and and I need to see what they've done the last two years. See if they've done any better than they did in, in 2020. If they haven't corrected their, if nobody n nobody asked them to pay anything back, you know they didn't basically get in much trouble. It sounds like to me. And you got two of the commissioners still there. I, I I'm thinking they're probably going back to their old ways again. They may be slicker at doing it. But but they I, I I don't trust this I I wouldn't give them anything. Yeah, it doesn't say uh, Nana and Papa's house on the well. In the the, the two the twenty eight hundred that they have per mile is without sales tax. So when we were giving them sales tax, they had about seventy five hundred dollars a mile. Wow, and that's why they so were that was that, up through twenty twenty. That's why they were getting a stipend or or some kind of monetary compensation themselves. Right. Well, I think they can pay themselves a hundred dollars a month. I uh, believe I they passed didn't. that law where they could pay themselves a hundred dollars a month. I I've believe the only thing I've seen is a statute that they don't receive compensation, but they can be reimbursed for expenses. But I don't. But that's that's two thirty three uh, something. But I'm I'm sure. But but I your driveway paved or whatever way more than that's a violation of our yeah. But there's also there's whether your special road district was formed under this type of government or another one so I could be looking at the wrong one um, but I do know that was a question that the highway patrol was asking me about was you know do you have copies of the checks that were written to the board members I think it's 060 it says the board shall serve without compensation but necessary expenses actually paid shall be repaid to them right but but you're exactly right. There are designations between cities and counties, so I'd have to double check. To I mean, here here's what I'm getting. Really so I've had probably a half a dozen people from Garrison Road District. These are citizens that are paying taxes, and at least a half a dozen people in the last four weeks have called me and said, "You ought to come out and see the roads. My roads have been worked on for years, and they're nothing but potholes anymore. And I put up with it long enough." Now a lot of them don't even have a clue what the problem was, so that somehow it never made the news, or they didn't hear about it. So you got all these citizens that don't know that their own commissioners were stealing from them, and, and now allegedly stealing. Allegedly stealing. Well, I don't know. Nobody was charged. Huh? Huh? Nobody was charged. Nobody was charged. Allegedly. Yeah. Well, my question would be, what have they done with their money since well, we've been that, giving that's them? Why I'd you like need to see what they've done with that. Well, and that's that why you need a financial money. statement. Yeah. You need to know how much money uh, that they uh, they bring in every year, and then you need to see what they're spending money on. If they can't send us that, maybe we can't do an audit. Well, I can but tell you exactly what they get every Every well, year, but then I we mean, need to, to, then we need to see a list of their expenditures. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, that's what Amy gave me for 23. Yeah. And I do get a list of expenditures, but it says things like paving. It's not something. an invoice for what was paid. Yeah, I just, uh, and again, I'm, yeah, whatever. I mean, this isn't a voting day, but I, I also just want to say any type of grant that the county receives, whether it's SEMA, FEMA, MODOT, you know, um, surface transportation funds. Any misuse of those funds, we are never eligible again. Yeah. Um, uh, so, and this isn't, you know, the IGA that we have with them, we revised it a couple years ago to um, basically say, like, you know, if you, to because of what happened, we said, you know, if you yeah. misuse these funds, the commission will decide whether you move forward or not um, based on that. So that's all written in there now, but... Um, I just I have a hard time with, so with it. <laughs> if we were splitting the the revenue and Garrison was getting a portion like they used to, what would that equate out to twenty twenty four? Roughly. If they were getting a sales if they tax. were if they were if they were still getting mm -hmm. a, a portion of the eligible sales tax. They depend on what they apply for. So you it's a hundred thousand dollar maximum. They could get up to basically that sixty three plus a hundred, which would equal out to seven thousand dollars a mile. Okay. Yeah. So seventy four twenty eight a mile. I mean we we have a control mechanism in place in which they can they can apply for funding for specific projects so we can monitor what they're doing mm -hmm. with the funds. The problem is is we can't control how they're backsiding it, that they're still paving private driveways and such to 
necessitate the need for we need to pull up this project mm -hmm. so I just we don't wouldn't see know what they were doing with their other money. That's what I'm saying. That's what we that's would not know. Yeah, we would, or they we would, would they use it, use this money to do the other stuff, but then take their property taxes that they're getting and use it to do that other stuff. With. Yeah, and that, that's where that's where I think that the the big disconnect is, in, in my opinion, with being able to track them. You know, um, you had a five dollar bill in your pocket, and you asked your mom for a five dollar bill, and you spent hers responsibly, but you spent yours wastefully. That's what the the, the fear is: is uh, they may spend hours responsibly and appropriately, but then they're going to waste the other. And if you just keep doing that year after year, you can get your projects taken care of and still do your side stuff that you were. And, and the fact that they're still in office that's disturbing. That. They, they've uh, received gain, they haven't been prosecuted, uh, they haven't been forced to pay back. Um, that's a big fraud on our taxpayers. You know, maybe some of those people that are complaining need to step up to the plate and run for a special road business. <laughs> that's true. I mean, we just had that election. They had every opportunity to go sign up. Yeah, I don't think there was uh, any and opposition because I'm pretty sure it wasn't on the ballot. There wasn't. Yeah, no. see, that, that's the problem. We're finding that's why we're doing an audit on all these boards because we're finding out that a lot of these boards do not ever put anything out in the public to to allow them to know there's going to be a potential election. So the same people just keep going <coughs> on and on and on. This is a a, a real example. Of what's going on in this yeah. county, well, that's perpetuating the same they thing they over and over. Know. But by yeah. but by statute, that's the that's the unfortunate thing, in my opinion. But by statute, if there's no opposition, they don't have to go on the ballot whatsoever. Like the city of Ozark had two of their three wards had no opposition, but they still showed up on the ballot, and there were people that wrote in against them. They they it's fresh in their mind that oh, this is an opportunity. But if you had been like the health department and had eight years of never showing up on the ballot, people forgot that even existed as an option to run for office. It's not fresh in their mind. And, and so that's something that I think everybody needs to, to be aware of, is that these positions are electable. They come up in April, <coughs> and they have that opportunity to maybe get some qualified. I'm not saying the individuals that are on there aren't qualified, because the qualification, I believe, is 21 years old, and you live in the area. So they're all qualified. Um, but. Uh, they're eligible. They're eligible, and and maybe maybe there could be somebody who we have a higher trust level with because they're doing everything that they're supposed to do and they're being held accountable. And at some point in time, maybe you know we could get back to um, dispersing these funds down the garrison to take care of some of these roads. Was there was there a reason why the prosecuting attorney didn't press charges, try to get some restitution or something? They never received all the information from the Highway Patrol. So the Highway Patrol really dropped the ball? Yes. Well, the guy passed yeah, away. Yeah, the guy died. Yeah. Huh? The guy died. The guy that was doing the investigating? Yes. Died during the investigation? Yes. And nobody else picked it up? Correct. Well, that's a lucky break for those three people. And a very unfortunate break for all these people that's calling up saying they have terrible roads, but they're paying their taxes. And I don't know, still know if, if they're getting sixty-three thousand four hundred dollars. I mean, uh, I don't understand why the roads would be so bad. If they only have twenty-four uh, miles, I don't understand why their roads aren't better. What are they doing with their money now? I think we'd have to see what they've been like. We'd have to. Request yeah. you can do a sunshine request I mean, for all of their paving. That's part of the problem. Is like these are designed to be their own separate statutory legal entities. They're not under the county. Um, yeah. They're designed to function independently. So if, you know you live in your special road district, and you don't like the way that your special road district's taking yeah. care of your roads. Talk to your special road district commissioners. Okay, um, citizens bear the ultimate responsibility for right. Not getting what they want. Okay, go sign up for that that job. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people they you know they're they're confused in a lot of different geographic regions because sure. they assume you know it's the county because they live in the county. They don't mm -hmm. think about the special road district. I I mean, how many times have I called you and said, 
before I go look at my my book, <laughs> and, and she can rattle it off very fast for me, which road is is ours or Selmore's or Garrison or Ozark, and and sometimes they're they're right up against each other, or it's confusing, or yeah. you know, we run into the state roads yeah. that are that are tied in. So our citizens get confused as the the ownership of roads. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Yeah. I mean, uh, the main point of this one was basically just to kind of go through what happened, um, so that you guys are aware, and whenever um, you'd like to address that in the future, that you're able to with some history behind it. And I wonder, I even wonder <coughs> who's performing their jobs for them. And do they know that they were part of a fraud? You would think they would. They're working on behalf of a special road district and they're off paving driveways and pathways to barns and yep. that that I mean that in theory could be a disqualifier for working on a county project, in my opinion. If you've been part of a fraud in another district, I don't know that we want to have you working on behalf of us in our district. And we, we did that temporarily. Um, there was a group, Huff Asphalt was one of the ones doing some work. They had some other uh, um, smaller groups that I think were based in Garrison that were doing some backhoe work um, that would do their snow removal brush cutting, et cetera. Those were some more local guys. Um, and at the time all of this was going on, we did put a freeze on any of those vendors doing any county work, but we have used them more recently. I think we didn't use them in 20 and 21, something like that, while all of this was, was happening. Well, hey, tell me this. So based on the questions that Commissioner Jackson, myself, uh, other people have asked, comments they've made, yeah. Austin, can, can can we legally just send them a certified letter with questions that we want to find out information uh, concerning their performance and wh how they spend their money? Uh, there's no way that, <coughs> that we're going to ever feel comfortable with trusting them and, and sharing more tax money with them with what we know today. There's no way, but the only way, maybe if if our county attorney sent them a letter with some pertinent questions that... Yeah, that there's just nothing that would obligate them to respond to. They, they don't have to respond? No. I mean, we could, I could make a Sunshine Law request for public records, um, but the Sunshine Law is not going to obligate them to answer my cross-examination questions. Well, but maybe that's... Uh, Maybe we have to spend the time looking at those sunshine records, but I mean, otherwise, I think this is just a, 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 a futile exercise because of, of wasted time. Because I, I would never want to help these. I, I, I have absolutely no trust in in what they've done or what they're still doing. I, well, I, I, I don't know how to help them. If they truly have changed their behavior over the past four years, and this revenue stream would assist them, and they truly change their behavior, they may willingly submit the answers and the information sure. to us. I mean, that's a possibility. And that um, could be a good litmus, litmus test if they have or haven't. Yeah. Oh, so we if they the flat questions. refuse to respond, and then do the okay, sunshine fine. Right. You can do, ask the questions that we all talked about. And then if they don't, we can do a sunshine, you can do a sunshine request. Yeah, if you guys want to send me a list of questions. Yeah, we could. I we could send a letter to whoever and ask yeah. them to answer whatever. Yeah. It's just well, like and that's true. I mean, Miss Amy's correct. Church. I mean, if you haven't done anything wrong, you'd be more apt to answer the questions. If you've done, so, if you're still hiding something, or maybe, you know, for a while they were pretty good, they behaved, but what makes me think that they now, if nobody ever did anything? Nobody's ever questioned them since that time. Have they gone back to some of their old ways again? You yeah, don't know. But I would think that that if they got away with it the first time, they may be headed back the same way again. Especially since they're, they're we're getting all these complaints. I, I didn't get any complaints the first two years as Eastern Commissioner on Garrison, but maybe that was too soon and the roads were still okay. I don't know. 
But well, the I, commissioners, they're probably complaining and the commissioners are probably saying, well, it's because we don't get any of the funding anymore from the sales yeah. tax and stuff like that. So I'm sure they're going to blame someone else, you know, instead of saying we're doing it for with other things and we're just not fixing your roads. I don't know. But, I mean, that sounds to me sure. that they're complaining or something. And yeah. They've been. I, I haven't received a few phone calls, and I tell them it's the treasurer's fault. So we just keep putting on. Just might as well. <laughs> no, I, I, I've re I've received a few uh, complaints, but I had a little bit of the background information and, and just tried to, you know, talk them through it. This is the responsibility of the Garrison Special Road District. They need to, you know, fix the roadways. I'm sorry. I wish we could you know take care of all the roads I wish all our roads could be you know 18 foot wide and beautiful asphalt the case is there's not enough revenue to do that and some of those roads don't belong to us and, and the one person I can't remember if it was last week or the week before they had no idea that they were in the Garrison Special Road District they just thought they lived on a county road so let's do, bit of confusion. let's do this let's go ahead and kind of end this part of the discussion so uh, Brandon, do you, uh, uh, you want us to send the uh, questions, email the questions to you, and you be the gatekeeper and take all the questions and email it to. I can to, do that. Uh, why, why don't you and I? Uh, I, I have some things, and uh, why don't we? Why don't we do that? And then, Miss Amy, if you if you got anything, uh, Austin, based on what you heard, I mean, let's this and let's do it within uh, this time period. Uh, um, now get, can we do it by next Tuesday where, where she can get it to I can, have, I can have my concerns drafted by tomorrow okay I'll, I'll have mine done by Monday so so uh, let, let's kind of push this a little forward too and, we, and we'll give them to you and then and then you send them to Austin Austin will send them a nice letter and we'll see what they do I don't usually send nice letters. Well, no, 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 well, I was just being, being a little satirical there, but send them a bad, bad letter. I don't. I, that's what it really. Is. Nobody likes getting letters from me. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. Okay. Is that okay on that case? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But the next thing, which is um, ironic. Yeah, ironic. I guess is the right word. So last year we had met in a work session over at my building. Um, talking about this very thing, not Garrison Special, but the sales tax program in general. Um, and some of the requests were to put together these uh, total numbers per mile, etc. cetera. Um, and then Commissioner Ballou had also mentioned coming up with um, a plan if the commission did vote to phase out this program altogether. Thanks, Todd. How to do this. Um, he had a good suggestion of if we were to end it, not to end it immediately, but to allow the special road districts to adjust um, kind of one at a time. So um, just some numbers again from, from the data that, that Auditor Dent sent me. Um, with the sales tax distribution awards every year, if they were to go to the six special road districts, they go to five now, but if they were included in Garrison Special, um, every one of the special road districts would have more money per mile than the county. So basically that's what's happening right now. Um, Billings Special would have about 5,000. Garrison, as I mentioned, would have about 7,400. Ozark Special has 12,500. Um, Selmore, 6,000. South Sparta Special would have 14,000. And Stoneshire, who only has 4.5 miles, um, would have just about $26,000 per mile. Where C1 and C2, wow. um, C2 would have 3,500, C1 would have 3,800. So, so our concern here at the road department is, um, you know, as our as inflation continues to hit us, um, and as we are still behind in trying to get our roads taken care of, just from an even a maintenance standpoint, um, it doesn't feel correct to us to be handing out money that doesn't need to be handed out or isn't required by law to be handed out to these groups. Um, and how many miles total miles do we have? Almost 700. Almost 700 miles. Um, now this sales tax program has been going on forever in one way or another. In 2012 it changed. Um, prior to 2012 there was just a percentage distributed to these groups based on how many miles they had. Um, 
there was an issue with an audit at that point, um, and Mr. Housley at the time informed the commission that these cities would have to apply for this money and then an IGA would have to be drafted between everyone. And at that time, the cities were a part of it too. Um, that was a really bad public meeting from the minutes that I read. Um, that didn't go over well. But that's been the process since 2012 until 2020. In 2020, um, because of the dollars per mile that the cities were picking up in revenue, we removed the cities at that time. Um, and we created the uh, that municipal cost share program that we have. So it was basically like, we're not going to give you a, a set amount of money every year, but if you do have an emergency, um, or you have something that you know you need help funding that would really benefit the folks in your community you can apply for this um, municipal cost share and there's no cap on that it's just basically how much funding do we have available to give those groups and as you know we've provided that to Highlandville and Saddlebrook up to this point um, um, the other part of that funding went into our um, capital projects fund 235 um, which was originally intended to help us build the bridges. It's still kind of sitting there to make sure that we're able to do that with the cost of everything going up. But, um, you know, at that point, the specials were still, uh, were still able to provide more dollars per mile than the county. Um, but being good neighbors, we thought we'd just keep trying to help the specials as much as we could. Um, but again, at this point, uh, you know, I'd at least like to bring to your attention that um, with this program, we are still significantly behind in our dollars per mile, and we're providing funding to um, groups that, when they're established, uh, I believe, are the intent is that they are able to fund themselves fully. And that's the whole point of them being established. Yes. Um, and if they are not able to do that they proposed a levy um, similar to what Ozark Special did a couple of years ago and that passed and they've increased the amount that they, they have and the work they're able to do. So, so but right. last year we allotted them, I can't remember how much it was, uh, for Fremont Road. Yeah, $100,000. 100000 Yes. So yes. They, they, have, they have more money available than we do for the entire county mm -hmm. per mile. But we went ahead and a lot of them, and I know there's a little bit of discussion that's happened in the past that, well, when this tax was originally sold to the public, it was sold as a big cooperative uh, exchange. Countywide. Yeah, yeah. countywide, that we would be um, putting those available funds where they're needed throughout mm -hmm. the county. And so now we're talking about changing that. Mm -hmm but it was sold to the voters in such a way, and, and I know there's controversy, you know, that the ballot language doesn't say that, but that was the message that was being put out. Well, and I think, you know, again, as far as phasing this out, additional thoughts on that, if the county were to consider it, would to be do something similar to that municipal cost share, but have it for the specials. Um, you know, have it, to that point where we are helping them with a need and not just maintenance, um, not helping them with things that the county can't even do because we're so far behind. Mm -hmm. um, whatever that set amount of, basically we set aside half a million dollars every year for this program for the special road districts. Um, if we put Garrison back in there, it would have to be 600000 that we put aside. But you take whatever portion of that you want and do like a special road district cost share. And if they have a need, um, something that they cannot fund on their own, uh, that is something above maintenance, then we're able to provide that for yeah. them. That would be like that would be my suggestion when you're, if it were to move forward with the phase out. Yeah, but going back to the comment that you said a minute ago, if the road districts didn't have enough re revenue, they could go to their 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 voting body and say, hey, we need to raise the levy. So could we, yeah. and and the common two hasn't had a road tax mm -hmm. levy in a long time. Correct. So we're we kind of saying, hey, you could do this, but we're not going to. Yeah. 
But if the common two road levy were the same as the common one, that's about 120000 a year. Sure, I know it's not much. Versus 600000 sure. that we're handing out for the... Yeah, I get it. I get it. I'm uh, just saying that. I, I, I do. I agree with that. And that but was part of over five years, it'd be a half a million dollars. And, and, and that makes those 2012 difference. minutes that I read, that was a lot of the argument from those folks is, you know, um, the commission at that time... The special road district commissioners were saying, "Well, if you can't afford to take care of your own roads, you put out a levy." But how do we go to the public asking for more funding when we're handing out funds that we don't have to hand out in the first place? You know, the the special road district could say, "We're doing everything we can with every penny <coughs> that we have, and now we need your help." We would be going saying, "We're not doing everything we have. We're also sharing it, but now we need your help." Sure, sure, and I, I totally get that. And I, you know, I have, I have some <coughs> history uh, with regards to this. My first time on this side of the, yeah. the you know, the argument uh, coming from the city, and you know, my great uncle was the presiding commissioner when the tax went in place uh, years ago, and, and knowing some of the stuff, I know I was mm -hmm. a younger person with maybe not as high of an interest in in politics at the time, but. I do remember some of those things that have gone by. I have heard a lot of the arguments back and forth on both sides, especially when going back to 2012 mm -hmm. um, with this. And I, I just think it, there needs to be a lot of careful consideration yeah. in whatever we do here that is well thought, well planned. Because I, I do say I do see that um, if we were to go and, and raise the levies on, on in one or even put it in place in two. Mm -hmm and raise it, hey, you're already getting X number of dollars in sales tax. Why are you now penalizing me again when you're diverting monies out um, to different areas? And I, I see that being a huge problem, especially when you start dividing out miles per, of road and what that is. I mean, what did you say, Stoneshire was 26,000? They have, yeah, they have. They have the now. greatest road. Well, and you know, if without and the these country of gold, yeah, paved with gold, maybe nice platinum road. curb and gutter. Well, and now also um, their all their roads are kind of on top of the crest of hills, so they don't get the kind of stormwater damage that other places. It's nice. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it makes you wonder mm -hmm. whether or not that road district even is necessary. Yeah. With only how many miles? Two and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half miles of roadway. Mm -hmm. Um, makes you wonder if, if if that taxing entity is even necessary. No offense to them and, and what they're doing, yeah. but four and a half miles is... That was the boundary they voted. I mean, it's yeah. a subdivision. It's, yeah. it's a big subdivision, but yeah, that yeah. was... And so, um, anyway. Yeah, and, and, you know, again, this isn't a voting session. This is just yeah. a continuation of when we met last year that... But I also think it's my duty to let you all know where C1 and C2 stands versus these special road districts. Um, because next Thursday also, I'm, I'm going to be presenting the award to the special road districts for, for FY24. So, sure. Um, and, and I know that it's difficult that a lot of people <coughs> will, will look at certain areas and they'll say, well, I'm triple taxed. I have I have a uh, sales tax to the city of Ozark, which mm -hmm. pays for the city street that I live on. I'm paying a tax to the county in sales tax, which is going to and and I live in the Ozark Special Road District. That's me. Yeah. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm paying three taxes to three different taxing entities, and 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 there's going to be a frustration level there with with a lot of people. Ultimately. More than likely, what everybody cares about is the road they drive on. Yeah. You know, and they, they're not as worried about outside the bigger picture. Yeah. Uh, that mm -hmm. just seems to be the way people. Yeah. Function. You know, Miranda, from you know what you've shared today, and knowing what our sales tax is flat, mm -hmm. and knowing that it was not good last year, so so you kind of looked in the crystal ball. And you see what we have on common one and common two, and every special road district has a lot more than we do. And and I'm getting it seems like more complaints. And I've talked to you a lot about you know when is that person's road, and 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 we're having to tell them it's still three years away, it's two years away, and they say well it hadn't been done for ten years. Mm -hmm. I I think. 
I, I think we're going to have to make a tough decision uh, with all three commissioners in our group, all of us, you, everybody. And we're going to have to make a tough decision before the end of this year. You, it's too, you know, you're going to award the money for 24, yeah. but before we start to award the money for 25, uh, I would be certainly interested in, in, in a phase out program whether it be two years, three years, four years, whatever, whatever it would be fair to them. But hey, I don't think uh, I don't think he's going to enjoy his job after he's reelected. He's got four more years. Uh, I don't think he's going to enjoy his job when people continue to call more frequently and you tell him that oh well that that's not going to be on the list for five more years. Uh, I mean. Well, and I, I, I don't think, think our roads in this county are as good as they need to be, and I've never and I've always said that it's not your fault. We have a great road engineer. We have a great group of employees. I have no fear that it's not it's not our workers. It's not you. It's lack of money. Yeah. Uh, and, and when we had to take the budget that we had for last year in 23 and give it to you for 24 and we couldn't give you any extra dollars, that's a cut. Because we know this year it's going to cost more per mile than it did last year. I really believe inflation's getting worse again. And, and, and so we have a tough deal. I mean, they're not going to like it. But sooner or later, I don't see any other. I don't see any other way to. If you want to make our counties, which we have 700 miles of road to, to take care of, I don't know any other way, especially with this sales tax situation. I've got it. Like I personally try to work on a lot of education for the public. I think sometimes there's some confusion. Um, you know, we'll have folks call and, and say it's been four years since you chip and sealed our road. You need to get back out here. And I have to explain that there's folks that have been waiting 20 years for yeah. their roads to be done. Or um, you guys brush cut a week ago, where are you? And I explain, okay, well, we have, on this side, we have 346 miles. Imagine you're driving three and a half miles an hour and you've got to go from one end to get back to the other. That's mm -hmm. going to take more than a week right. to get back there. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, there's two sides to every road. Every time somebody calls me and complains about mowing, yeah, that's mowing, just miles, mowing, miles. I'm just yeah. saying, hey, you got them all on both sides of the road. And yeah. it's not it's not just that. I mean every every year the cost of goods goes up. Every year the cost of service right. goes up. Every year the, the employees mm -hmm. uh, cost, you mm -hmm. know, uh, goes up. And every year we add more miles of road to the overall system. So we have a compounding effect here. Uh, and when our revenues are not going up, for whatever reason, you know, if we're sitting here at a, a point something percent of uh, increase mm -hmm. for uh, 24, that's not offsetting all of the, the natural increases that we're experiencing. Yeah. So less miles of road are going to be able to be uh, taken care of, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, we, we've had these conversations when it comes to right-of-way maintenance. Um, I grew up in an area where Common one never came down our road to cut the grass because all of us farmers cut our own right of ways. Yeah. That was just what we did because uh, we wanted to, to look nice. Well, now nobody does that. I swear if my, my father was alive, he'd go crazy knowing what the fence line looks like uh, on, on our old place. But that's just the, that's just the way in which we, we live now, and everybody wants that service done on their behalf. Yeah. But they don't want to pay the additional tax that goes along with it or the additional cost that goes along with it. At some point in time, we really have to sit down and figure out what we can and cannot do um, and stay statutory compliant with, yeah. with whatever. And if that's, you know, all the intersections get mowed but nothing else gets mowed but once a year, you know, to reduce the cost so that we can chip and seal. You can't get chipped and sealed every four years. If I remember, right, the statute is that the county must brush cut once a year in July. And that's, that's the statute, something like that. Um, something from, you know, 1927 or yeah. whatever it was. 19-aught. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we might be able to put ourselves in a position where we can buy a lot of goats and put them yeah. on a leash and just, you know, let yeah. them run down the roadways. But but ultimately, you know, we, we want to take care of our citizens yeah. and we want to make sure that safety is the, the number one thing. But revenues are not increasing as rapidly as we would hope, but the demand for services 
is increasing yep. and our responsibility is increasing and you're right it's it's hard to justify diverting a portion of your budget to other taxing districts who then have more revenue per mile than what you have mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really hard for me to explain that to um, a citizen that lives in in rural eastern Christian County that we've diverted money over to a subdivision <coughs> that only has four miles yeah. and they are quadruple dollar per mile than the rest of the county is. Yeah. Um, but it's again this is just kind of food for thought yeah. it was what was requested when we had that meeting late last year um, whatever the next step is um, like if you want to meet again before we do 25 I'm happy I to think we that. definitely need to meet before 25 I think we need to make a decision uh, what's, your, what's your comfort level W would it be better to phase over, phase out over two years, three years, four years? What do you think would work out the best for special road districts and for the county? I don't think you can do cold turkey and stop it all. Uh, so, so man, we're I mean, going to get I some pushback, but but I think I mean if we think this out, I think there's going to be some legitimate reasons. <laughs> why we're trying to protect the 700 miles that we take care of yeah. uh, too. I mean I think a phase out over as many like, three years might be great. Again three I years. think it would be beneficial for us again to have um, some amount of cost share funds available for groups that you know it's similar to Highlandville like the Highland like that box culvert that they replaced well, they yeah, that program. that on their own. Sure. You know so things like that. Um, but you know, uh, overlays and crack fill and stuff that folks can afford. When we c we can't even crack fill our roads, it's just a little difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, again, just like I said, work session, food for thought. Um, I can try to plan something towards the end of the year before we send out 25 and we can meet again. Yeah, I think that would be really good to have, you know, some options. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately. You know, here, here's the thing that, that people like to say, well, you're the commissioner, you're in charge of the roads. Well, in theory, yes, I am, because we're in charge of, of you, but we have a highway administrator. We value your opinion, um, and, and uh, you know, if you have some options that we can look at, because you're, you're in the weeds every single day. Yeah. So for me to jump in the weeds with you may cause a little bit of confusion, uh, but if you have that ability to formulate a couple of decent ideas, we may be able to, to work within those or maybe modify those a little bit that are more palatable across the county. Well, even if, I mean, again, if it moves forward with phasing out and the cost shares, that might be something, too, that you can pull Garrison back into because they would have to specifically fill out yeah. um, an application. Apply. Yeah. And uh, would have to submit progress reports and all that kind of thing. How many counties did we have? Two or three that that actually took advantage of that last year? Two cities. Two? Two cities, yeah. Two cities did. Um, yeah, Saddlebrook not only counties, but cities. Saddlebrook so and Highlandville. Huh? Saddlebrook and Highlandville. Okay. Yeah. And the others could have applied, right? Because sure. we tried to we tried to communicate to them. When I had all the mayors in those quarterly meetings, we tried yeah, to. Yeah, the couple, couple mayors' couple lunches we talked. I know Fremont was interested, but they never actually applied. Yeah. Um, I talked to the mayor of Ozark. Um, and kind of described what was going. I think they're all aware. Yeah. Um, I know. I even talked to um, Sparta, but it was the previous mayor about it. So. But you know, Ozark has a dedicated sales tax revenue specifically for. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have their own funding mechanism. They've alleviated some of the roadway. Uh, necessities through the uh, the road distribution map that we have with the Ozark Special Road mm -hmm. District. That, you know, so instead of the Ozark Special Road District diverting 25% of their budget to the municipalities, we swapped roads. Yeah. So no money's changing hands, and it makes it a little bit more palatable for everybody. And that happened back in 2011, 12. Um, but now they've got their own dedicated revenue source. So for them to come forward with a project, I mean, it would be pretty massive, I guess, um, for them not to have, you know, plus their, their combined ability to work inside the OTO. I don't know that Ozark needs our help. Well, and I think that's that's why it's referenced as a need. Yeah. And there's, you know, 
it comes to me and then it goes before you. And sure. Yeah. Yeah. Totally good. Okay. That's it. All right. All right good. Well, thank good you. Good discussion. Yeah. So, Austin, you're going to be here uh, Thursday morning for, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for the fun battery I, I storage. I'm in mediation on Thursday morning. Huh? I'm in mediation on Thursday morning. So, you won't no. be here at all? No. You want to FaceTime you into it? <laughs> Man, that's a lot of batteries. I can't, I can't believe you're not going to be here for that. But we have actually turned it in from a work study.